What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Nightingale video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a video that was just released uh, yesterday, uh, showcasing a little bit more about Realm cards. We're going to check out the video, we're going to talk about it. Um, this is one of the games that I'm actually pretty hyped about that's coming out next year, so let's go ahead and get into this. So we thought a lot about how we would pay off this idea of many, many different realms and many, many different places to explore. And so early on in the project, we invested a fair bit of our time and effort and thinking into procedural generation. Over the years, that system got more and more sophisticated to where we could really see the potential of not just having these realms available there for players to go explore, but to actually empower players to control what they see on the side of the portals via realm cards. And the realm card mechanic is our interface for players to engage in that procedural realm generation. A lot of the things that players are looking for now, it's not just about getting one generated world, it's about the generation being meaningful and having some level of impact over what you're seeing so it doesn't feel arbitrary. So the realm card system is a way to mix that kind of player agency with the unpredictability and the surprise of a procedural system. Players will be asked to craft realm cards based on recipes they discover or earn through the course of their gameplay. And once you craft those realm cards, then you go to a portal that you'll find in the realms to discover those two. And then you play the realm cards in certain combinations. And so all of those things add up to a recipe that then informs the portal what it's going to open the other side of that. So we try to organize realm cards into biome cards, major cards, and minor cards. Biome cards will introduce over time. We've got the swamp, the desert, and the forest right now, each with their own unique environmental challenges. Major cards represent really big things that will happen in the realm when you play those. And then minor cards, there could be dozens of realm cards in the minor set uh, when we release into early access that have little adjustments and little tweaks on what you get on the other side. So say that you want to go out and you've got a few different environments you could go to, you can choose. Do I want to go to a forest? Do I want to go to a desert? That's the kind of thing you'll be picking your cards for. Then beyond that, maybe you want to go hunting. Maybe you want to go looking for natural resources. Maybe you're just looking for something new. And so you might have a card called something like the hunt and playing that on top, you're going to get more of that focus on you know, dangerous creatures that you can be looking for to collect their hides or just you want a good fight. And on top of that, you might be thinking, well, I really, you know, I don't like nighttime. I find it stressful. I don't feel like that today. Well, maybe there's a card you can play on top of that to make it so that the sun never sets. So once you've opened the realm cards, you'll have a portal that you can go through to get to that realm. As long as that portal stays open, you can go into that realm. But once it closes, that realm is lost. Using the same combinations of cards in the future will get you the same type of realm, but it won't connect you to that exact same one before. So as you stack up realm cards and go further and further on your adventures, you're going to find higher and higher tiered resources. And if you craft things out of those higher and higher tiered resources, the gear that you make will be more powerful and stronger as a result. And so you're going to want to progress and find those more challenging realms so you can get those better resources, so you can keep up with the ever more dangerous challenges you're going to face. You know, um, so, okay, so, so far this is really cool. But there's a couple of questions that I have uh, with this. It's like, if we're going into a realm or the realms are procedurally generated, how big are the realms, right? And then I'm also curious as to like what the strategy is going to be so you could progress quickly. So from what I understand about this game is it's kind of similar to Valheim in a sense that there's a certain amount of players that you can have in your realm when you play with your friends. I think it was like 10 uh, unless they decide to change this uh, until launch. So I'm curious to see if the difficulty scaling of these realm cards as you move into these realms is affected by the amount of players in the game or if some of the realms that you will produce will be so difficult um, that you will need more people to go with you or it's going to be extremely hard um, to uh, take it in solo context. The one thing you can do is if you're playing with your friends and they've used you know, a set of realm cards that they have, maybe even ones that you haven't seen before, they can open up a portal and you can go through. So if you have friends who've you know, gotten some exciting cards and want to show you the way, then you can attack you have right, gotten on. some exciting cards. All right, so hold on. This is what we saw here. Hold on a second. Um, one thing, I really like how the characters look um, externally, right? So let me mute this here. 
but like you guys can see here how, how you see like other players running around and we see that we have a sprint function as well when she's getting ready to go into the portal which is nice okay. then you can tag along and maybe hope to make those cards yourself one day so players have the chance to declare any realm they want to be their respite realm. And that respite realm is where you will return to if you die and can't be resurrected, where you can fast travel to if you find yourself in a significant amount of danger, and where you're going to be building your estate, which is your main base and the place you're going to invest a lot of your crafting efforts, you're going to customize your estate for creative expression. So where exactly your respite realm is, is up to you. you know, it might make a lot of sense to put it somewhere that's calmer and more peaceful, has lots of nice resources, but if you want, to be living in a dangerous swamp filled with all kinds of deadly creatures and you think that that's exciting, go for it. We're not going to stop you. We also encourage players to build all of their estates in the same respite realm so you can have different players all deciding that one realm is going to be their respite realm. And that really unlocks social gameplay. You see some of that in our trailers, players all building out. This is actually kind of crazy. This game looks incredible. Like I'm... Like, listen, don't get me wrong. I love the Valheim. I love the gameplay mechanics. I just couldn't get over the graphics. <laughs> so if they're implementing something similar to Valheim in terms of systems, and then we have a, a look and an aesthetic like this, plus with the realms, uh, I think it adds, you know, a lot of variability and replayability. I think we could have something good here these really interesting towns where they customize their estates to help each other and do certain things better than there's they focus on certain crafting elements for example that looks really eventually good. if you choose to move on and move your respite realm then you'll close your last one like any other kind of realm but that is the one kind of persistent place you know when you log back on that's where you're going to be that was definitely a saddle that we just saw there so hopefully there's mounts so realm cards are something we can keep adding to as we you know, keep working on the game. New content, new cards to give it to you. They're not something that we have a, a set number of. We keep adding to it more and more to show you new places. They're not something that we monetize. They're something that you know are available for you to craft and you know, keep seeing new places as we go on. As we talk about realm cards here, I get so excited to imagine the kinds of realms they're going to create and discover through the course of their journeys by playing different realm cards and different combinations. I can't wait to see what they come up with and find. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm excited for this. Uh, still said that they had to delay this as they're moving into UE5. Um, but Nightingale is a survival game because I, I love, absolutely love, love, love survival games. But let me know what you guys thought about this video uh, in the comment section. Uh, do you think that realm cards are a good idea? Are you guys excited for the procedural generation? Um, if so, uh, what are some of the things that you would like to see uh, with realm cards? Let me know that in the comments. But anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns at all, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to assist and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.